thank you to Dershow Kid for sponsoring this video. This is one of those genres that I absolutely love because we're walking the line between so many different worlds and feels and genres that it just comes together in a really cool and unique way. Uh, and there is so much detail that has to go into it to walk those lines and tiptoe along all of them at the same time. So let's go ahead and start with the drums. I realized I should have gone to the bathroom before I started filming, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and let Dark and Terrible Secret John tell you all about today's sponsor, DistroKid. Thank goodness that guy's out of here. All right, well, I'm Dark and Terrible Secret John, and I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you're wondering what my Dark and Terrible Secret is, you're gonna have to stick around to at least the end of the month to find out all about my Dark and Terrible Secret. I've been using DistroKid for the last six years, long before we started working together. And one of the things that I love about what they do is their hyperfollow page. It's one link that you give to somebody who's interested in hearing your music, and then it will automatically direct them to the proper platform. So no more dealing with the confusions or hassles of like, I don't have Spotify, I don't have this platform. Send them this one link, and that is it. If your song is not released yet, it automatically turns into a pre-save link so then they can automatically pre-save it on Spotify, which is a great way to help engage people easier with less friction. You also get more information and more statistics about the people who are engaging with your content, which can be really helpful for sending emails, deciding on ad campaigns, audience targeting down the line. If you're interested in signing up with DistroKid, use my link in the description below to get 7% off your first year. It's also a great way to support the channel. And it means a lot that you sat down here with me while John is over there taking a piss. I think he's almost done though now. So I don't have time to tell you about my dark and terrible secret. You'll have to wait till next time. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, oh, the headphones. The headphones. <laughs> Wow. So when it comes to anthemic pop drums, it's always over the top, hyper realistic, and probably layered with things like explosions, stomps, and claps, because that kind of fuses the whole like we will rock you stuff with you know, a more of a modern edge, as you can hear we have going on here. So the kick drum is grouped together, uh, at least one part of it here. Which is a couple of different kick drums, electronic kick drums layered together. And then we have this stomp sample. And they're almost together besides some of those stutter sounds because the stomp sounds weird like that. And then we have this explosion sample as well. And that, that explosion sample acts as the most punctuating piece to the kick drum pattern. And that's the part the entire song that you're following accent wise. Like if you were gonna headbang to this, that's where you'd kind of like punch somebody in the ribs. So if you watch the blue layer here. So that was kind of a way to then layer all that together where it sounds like one element, but there's so many different things happening together there. Again, it's over the top, hyper-realistic anthem pop. So we have two different sounds here. We have this little splat guy. And then we have this big old clap. And then together, I also added this like nice delay here. So it adds some extra bounce to the snare pattern. And I don't know why, it sounds weird on its own, but with everything else, it really comes together. And again, we have a little bit of a snare, but then a lot of that big clap. So we have boo, 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 boo. Like that energy where it's very anthem feeling because the stomps, because the explosions, because of the claps all coming together there. And then with the hybrid use of these more trappy elements with the hi-hat choices. where I'm pitching the hi-hats around, and then it's a great contrast where it leaves room for the big boom, boom claps, and it all comes together into making this groove. Next up is bass. So when it comes to the bass here, I wanted to make sure that we incorporated some like cinematic theatrical elements, but it still needs to be 808, it still needs to be crunchy, and it still needs to cut through, again, walking all these different lines. So for this bass here, we have a nice big old bass slide up front. which is super cool and it just like really punctuates, listen up, with that way that bass slides down there. Um, and then other than that, we have a couple of little bends, uh, but it's really all root notes, but with bends, it adds some intrigue 
to that kind of straightforward pattern. So a couple of little bends that add intrigue, but with this kind of thing too, I didn't want the bass to be uh, overly the focus. It's more just this wall of accent. Like that's really the focus. And so the bass is just providing that low end support of that. And then when it bends down, it kind of creates this disjointed and then it comes back in and hits really hard. Next up, we have the fat chords and keys. So I have this huge chord stack here. which is a really intense collection of sounds. You can hear that we have guitar layered in here, which doesn't happen a ton like this kind of guitar in pop music, um, which is a really cool fusion with these sounds here. And again, walking the line, we want a little bit of the queen energy, but not so much that you're like, this sounds like a rock song. So in, in the whole wall of things. Maybe that's me, you can't really tell it's a guitar, but if I take it out. Baby, that's me, shining bright for the world to see. Awesome. They provide a lot of that mid-range clang, 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 clang energy that's really cool and definitely holds the weight with the big accents. And then the other contrast, because again, this is all about like intensity and then floatiness. So the contrast between those two things makes the floatiness, uh, excuse me, so the contrast between the two things makes the impactful notes hit hard while these other things float back. Um, I have these plucks that are happening also earlier in the song, but kind of more in the background. Baby, that's me, shining bright for the world to and it's a really tucked in piece, but it's the contrast where when I take it out, you're going to feel like the impactful things almost lose their energy because we don't have a relative sound to show how intense they are. And that contrast is something that, that as my job as a producer, when somebody says they want something to hit hard, I'm almost thinking, well, what soft elements do I put in so that difference makes it feel harder, not harder than it is, but you can feel the difference and it's like, oh, shush, when that stuff comes in. So here it is with the plucks and then I'm going to take them out. Baby, that's me, shining bright for the world to Without So without that contrast, it just feels like everything is hitting hard and then it doesn't feel like it's hitting as hard as when you have the soft elements. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Whatever. I like it. It, it sounds great and I love the contrast and the fusing of the two worlds. And then the last piece too is the fact that these plucks prevent it from sounding too rockish. Again, because we're, we're having those trappy modern pluck elements that in a different context, you could take that loop and like play with it and then make a trap beat out of it. But within this context, it just adds some like, hey, this isn't just a rock song. We have these things that are fusing worlds and it kind of creates this landscape that Lisa can just jam on top of. That's really cool and bridge some gaps that I've never done as a producer within this track. Now, with that being said, moving on to the vocals, seeing the melody and the way that it kind of cycles in and out of being tense and released where it's released feeling up top and at the very end and then the tensions in the middle it creates this like perfect movement for the chord progression to openly kind of have that rock energy to it and it obviously worked out really well um along with this harmony right here shining bright for the world to see I'm a shining bright for the world to see I'm a the harmony now implies the d minor more than the chords do uh in the song like these don't have anything besides the root and the fifth. So we're really relying on the harmony and some of those plucks in the background to imply the D minor without directly playing it because it makes it sound angstier and less direct. So by removing the third, it's very, it's, it's a power chord. It's a guitar power chord. That's the basis of it. But again, we're presenting it in a way where it just doesn't sound like a rock track. Next up, we have the sound effects. And of course, you can already hear there's all these explosions and booms and slaps and swooshes and plops and all that kind of stuff. So we have a bunch of different things happening. And then again. Where 
each time we have a little bit of a variation of the sound choices, the way that they swoosh up, the sustain. So it's always making sure that we have kind of this punishing energy coming in, but it's always going to have a little different flavor on top of it. And that's, of course, what is the spice of life when it comes to production and dressing up each chorus in a different way. Put all those elements together and what do you get? Anthem pop. Whoa, first off, thank you so much for being here and spending time with me on the internet. That's super cool. And I really appreciate that you watched the entire video. There's more videos like it here on the screen. And I, of course, want to say thanks again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. And if you want to hang out more, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere else. I love making internet friends. That's what this is all about. With that being said, I get out there, work hard, and remember, kindness wins.